Okay, good morning. Welcome once again. Uh, good to see you all. I hope you had a good Sunday and a good rest and good night's sleep. I didn't, but <laughs> uh, yeah, such as Sundays, most of my Sundays. But good to see you all. I um, hope you all are doing well. Um, so let's just quickly uh, recap what we covered in the last class and we'll go on from there, okay? Uh, but uh, but I want to. I don't want to do that. I want to hear you quickly uh, tell me all the basis for ministering healing and deliverance. What's the first basis? The first basis. Okay. The name of Jesus. Okay. Yeah, the cross, and in that in that section we have the blood of Jesus as well. Okay. Yeah, okay, the kingdom of God, all right. The word, the Holy Spirit power, okay. A commission, okay. The name of Jesus. Faith. Okay, so in order, guys, what's the first one? Let's go in order. God's nature. <laughs> Okay, uh, the first, the very first basis for ministering healing and deliverance is God's nature. Uh, it is His nature to heal. He is Jehovah Rapha. Right, what's the second one? The cross. The cross is for everyone, isn't it? Uh, and under the cross, we see that uh, His blood is also mentioned. Right, there is power. There is healing in the blood of Jesus. Uh, and then after that, the the word. Okay, yeah. His word brings healing, right? Uh, his word carries the power of God, right? Okay, what else? The Holy Spirit power, okay. The name of Jesus, okay. Faith, kingdom, kingdom of God, and commission, okay? So all of this is uh, the basis for us to minister a uh, healing and deliverance, okay? Um, I mean... As I mentioned, if if we if we only had one point, that if we only knew that okay, it's, it's God's nature to heal everyone, that should be enough. That is more than enough. Yes, but our God is so good; He goes ahead and He gives us. He said, "You know what? My cross is also being added to the list." Uh, and if that was not enough, you also have my word. My blood is also there for you. Just those two things should be more than enough. But then, no, we also have his word. We also have his name. And there's an invitation for us to come in faith. Uh, right? So all of those were the basis for healing uh, and, and deliverance. Okay? Uh, now, let's just move on. Um, we'll try. Uh, and so uh, what's the page number you all are on? In the hard copy, it's 84. PDF, anyone? 51, 52, right? Is that right? Okay, yeah, that's what I remember. Cool, okay. All right, I, hi, Karen. Hi, Nina. Hi, Shiv Kumar. Hello, Jasmine. Good to see you all. Hope you all are doing well. Okay, um, so let's just continue from where we left off, all right? Now that we've understood all the basis for ministering in healing and deliverance, uh, a classic question uh, is, is it God's will to heal everyone after everything we've studied? What is your answer? It's a very simple, it has to be an emphatic, loud yes, right? It is as simple as that, right? Say, is it God's will to heal everyone? Yeah, yeah all right, there we go. Okay, so yeah, God's will is to heal anyone and everyone of any physical condition. Okay, uh, you have your notes with you, right? Okay, you. so you know where I'm reading from, right? Yes or no? The word? Oh, no, we are way ahead from there, bro. <laughs> Let's come back in time. Uh, OK, so the section that says, is it got, uh, Vimal, you sure that's page 51, right, in PDF? 53. OK, if you say so. All right, so let's all read that first line together, OK? 56. OK, make up your mind, guys. <laughs> 
56 in PDF. Okay. It's, it's, it's like some kind of a auction that is happening. 56, one time. 56. All right. Page number 56. Uh, so is it God's will to heal everyone? Say yes. God's will. Okay, say it with me. Come on. God's will is to heal anyone and everyone of any physical condition. Okay. Okay, we say that simply because, and how do we support this statement or this claim? Right, we've covered enough content, enough material for us to know that hey, God is good; He wants to heal everyone. Uh, but just let's just add to the list. Okay, not once in the Bible uh, we see that Jesus is the perfect will of God. He is perfect theology. Right, God's best is presented, is seen in God's best. Is absolute best is seen in who? Jesus. Yes. So not once in the Bible we see, okay, when someone came to Jesus uh, for healing or whatever, Jesus said, uh, I know your past. A little bit on fire only on Sundays, but Monday to Saturday are like this. So I don't think I want to heal you. Does Jesus say anything like that? I think it's not God's will. I think it's it's, it's God's will for you to suffer a little bit more. <laughs> we don't see that, isn't it? Right? Uh, and I'm, I mean, people ask this all the time, and I get a little irritated also. It's like, but what about Job? You know, I was like, what about him? Like, you know, I follow the gospel of Jesus Christ, not the gospel of Job. And God's best is seen in Jesus. He healed everyone, everyone who came to him, isn't it? Um, so just let's read a few more scriptures, um, you know, that just to build our faith uh, for us to be encouraged. And the classic scripture for us to start off with is Matthew chapter 4, uh, 23 and 24. Matthew chapter 4, verse 23 and 24. Um, it says, so Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sickness so one of the points we studied in the previous chapter is your preaching must be supported with healing and deliverance supernatural right ministry as well so you see that after jesus he preached went about preaching then he went about doing the healing ministry as well so all kinds of sickness all kinds of disease among the people Right, they brought to him. Then his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who were demon possessed, epileptics and paralytics. He healed them. Right? All kinds of sickness. We we, we not once we see that, oh boy, okay, what is happening here? Uh, Jesus said, No, go back, come back tomorrow, something. Another scripture, Matthew 8, 16. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a, with, a word, with a word and healed all who were sick. More. Matthew 12, 15. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew from there, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. Mark 6, 56, wherever he entered, okay, wherever he entered into villages, cities, or the country, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might, they might just touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched him were made well. Isn't that wonderful? I think we'll just move on. So uh, everyone who came to Jesus uh, were healed. This is not only the people in the covenant, but people outside of the covenant as well. Uh, the Roman centurion, he was a Roman, a Gentile. He was not in the covenant. And we see that as when he came to Jesus in faith, uh, Jesus healed him too. But another beautiful example is also in Matthew 8.13. Um, Matthew 8.13 
we see that um, when he had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. Have you seen the series Chosen or any Jesus movie? It's quite amazing, isn't it? I mean, when you imagine great multitudes, great multitudes are the words that's used when they can't put a definitive number. Right? When they say, okay, hundreds of people followed him, when they can't count, when it goes countless as they say it, then they use the words great multitude, right? Uh, great multitudes followed him. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Okay, let's pause. So what is the leper saying? What is the leper saying? Good morning. <laughs> Lord, if you are willing... You can make me clean. Now look at the second part of what he is saying. He's saying, you can make me clean. <clears throat> the leper does not doubt that Jesus can heal him. He's saying, you can make me clean. Right? When do you say that? When you are 100% sure, right? You can do it. Right? So leper is not questioning his power, Jesus' power to heal him. But he is asking if you are willing. We all know that Jesus' is a great response. What does he say? I am not willing. <laughs> what does he say? What does he say, guys? <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, just, just bear with us today, uh, online students. We are a little slow today, including me. So... I need another cup of coffee, but it's okay. <laughs> right, so the point is, uh, everyone uh, who came to Jesus in faith, Jesus healed. Are you with me? Right, and so, I mean, that should encourage us. Uh, we are called to, we are Christians. It simply means little Christs. That's what it is. We are called to represent, uh, right, one of uh, Paul's apostles, uh, epistles, he says, I am Christ's ambassador. That means I'm representing Jesus. We are all called, you, 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 right? We are all called to represent or represent Jesus, right? And we need to walk in that same authority and same faith that, okay, if Jesus, if you see, okay, what, you know, this famous tagline, WWJD, you know what that is? What would Jesus do? WWJD. You get all wristbands and all one season or t shirts. <laughs> what would Jesus do? Uh, I've, I, I've pulled a lot of pranks on my friends <laughs> using the tagline, What would Jesus do? But just irritate them. But okay. Um, so again, we've established that it's God's will to heal everyone. And why is it, why is it God's will to heal everyone? Why is it his will to heal everyone? Sorry? It's Jehovah Rapha, right? And in that, we also see about look at the cross. One of the bases for ministering healing and deliverance is what? The cross, right? Yes or no? Okay, so when Jesus healed, Jesus did not heal the believers because there were no believers at that time. Believers, the word believers started coming from Acts, the first century church. So basically, everyone Jesus healed were unbelievers, but those who but they just believed in Jesus that they could heal, he could heal them. Right? God's will is to heal everyone simply because the cross is for everyone. Right? The cross of Jesus Christ is for everyone. It is as simple as that. So, um, and in your notes, you would read it. It says. As we have studied earlier, healing, deliverance, and wholeness is provided through the cross of Jesus Christ. The price Jesus paid on the cross is for the entire human race. Right? Jesus paid the same price and made the same provision for every person. Pause there, right? Um, we see that in Romans. While we were yet sinners, Jesus died for us. 
right? That means before I even confessed my sinner's prayer, before I said, Lord, I'm a sinner. I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. I accept you as my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When I made that prayer, that's when I became a Christian, right? But then he died for me even before I made that prayer. Are you with me? Right? So the cross is for everyone. And that's why we, that's one of the answers <clears throat> uh, why we see the God's will. Why is it God's will to heal everyone? Because the cross is for everyone. And the promise of salvation, everybody say salvation, okay, is for everyone. The promise of salvation is for everyone. Right? Everyone who believes. So the word, um, the Greek word for salvation is sozo. Right? S-O-Z-O. -O. It is a Greek word and it is found more than 110 times in the New Testament. Okay? Now, the word sozo is a verb. What is a verb? Verb is, it means action. That means to do. Right? Uh, you, if he's, if, for example, if you say, okay, he is running, what is a verb in it? <laughs> running, right? Because it's something, action it is happening, okay? So, sozo, it says in your notes, is a verb, an action word, something that is done, something that happens because of a work of God. Okay, something that is done and something that happens because of God's work. So, this word sozo is a comprehensive word that includes one, forgiveness of sins, healing of from sickness, deliverance from every work of the enemy, rescue or preservation from danger and harm and total wholeness. Salvation, that is sozo, it means to be saved, healed, delivered, victorious, rescued, preserved. You've heard some of those words in our declaration, right? Yeah, so that's what sozo is, is salvation. It's what we call it as a complete package, a total package, right? We look at a person that we really like and we say, oh, you're a complete package, aren't you? <laughs> right? Beauty and brains. Salvation is something like that. It's complete package. We see everything. It's a verb, right? Okay, let's turn the page. And the next page we see, uh, it, it gets more definitive. Sozo means forgiveness of sins. Sozo means physical healing. It means deliverance from demonic powers. It means rescue, preservation from danger. Sozo is for everyone. It is received by grace through faith okay salvation is received by grace now why do we say grace it's received by grace we don't receive salvation because of something you did right it's received it's given to us because of what jesus did on the cross uh, and we receive it through faith and so so happens when you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth all right, can someone read Romans 10, 9 and 10, please? Thank you. So what's the first half of that verse? Did everybody get it? Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. Rin, can you read it one more time for us, please? Thank you. So... Very quickly, now we just looked at the word sozo and its extensive description and definition that it's a complete package. It has healing, uh, you know, uh, physical wellness uh, and spiritual uh, salvation and everything. And, and then we come to this last definition in Romans chapter 10. We see if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, right, about Jesus, then you are saved, isn't it? Yes or no? And so, what, well, the key point there is the salvation is for everyone 
right? I'm repeating intentionally. Salvation is for everyone. Sozo is for every one. But we just saw for salvation, one of the aspects of it is a sinner's prayer is that you have to repent, confess, believe. Yes or no? And in that moment, you don't just get salvation. That means you're not just saved, but you also have to be healed. You have to believe that, isn't it? Now, let's say you are all unbelievers. I'm just saying, okay, you come in your church, you give an altar call, and a person comes to say, it's like, okay, Pastor Vimal, I want to give my life to Jesus. Uh, you know, I want to repent of my sins. What will you do, Vimal? What will you do? Right? You'll smile and say, okay, okay, very nice. Come back. Oh, amazing. Huh? You pat on their back. Pastor Vimal, when someone comes and says that they want to you know, give their life to Jesus, what will you do? Where? You surrender to whom? Police station. Huh? What? <laughs> okay. And... Yeah, do we have another cordless mic or something? We don't have a cordless. We don't have a secondary mic as well. Secondary mic with the cable that is long enough. Okay, I think uh, we can keep someone in the front. So when they are reading, they can use the mic to read so it can benefit those online. Thanks, Nina. We'll, uh, we'll see if, it, if that works. Okay, so while that is happening, right? <clears throat> yeah, cool. So if someone comes and says that, like whoever, you might be the leader or a pastor of a church, whatever, if someone comes and says, okay, I want to give my life to Jesus, our response is not going to be, I think God, you know, I think you should just be in your sin for some more time. I don't think it is, uh, you know, his will, uh, you know, for you to be saved. Any of those response is, it's going to be, it's going to be what? It's just absolute stupidity, like to make a statement like that. I, you know, I don't think God wants you to be healed. Uh, you know, you should suffer in your sins for some other time. Be in your addictions, no problem. Uh, I don't think it's God's will for you to go to heaven. You know, I think you should go to hell. <laughs> we are not going to make statements like that, isn't it? What will we do? When we, we will pray for the per person, isn't it? We lay our hands, we are excited for the person. We say, okay, we're so happy that you want to give your life to Jesus. Yes or no? Yeah, we, we, we will never respond. I hope you will never respond <laughs> by saying, yeah, okay, I, yeah, it is, you know, I think it's God's will. No, we are excited with the, about that person and we say, okay, yes, the cross is for you. He died for you while you were yet a sinner. And so, yes, you can conf if you confess and believe in your heart that Jesus uh, died and rose again for you, uh, you know, you become, you will be saved. But the same thing should also apply for healing and deliverance. Because salvation has all of those meaning. It's not just a sinner's prayer. It's for healing as well. Healing and deliverance as well, right? And so it does not really make sense for us to pray Lord, if it's your will, heal this person now. Right? Uh, like it's yes mentioned in your notes, but then it, you also hear people praying prayers like that. It's like, okay, Lord, we pray for a certain individual. And I see that face. <laughs> now, if it is your will, let them be healed. Will you make a prayer like that? Will you make a prayer like that? Hey, uh, next class, uh, Sri Radha, get everyone coffee, okay? Uh, we don't have to pray like that. Why? Because we know it is God's will to heal everyone, isn't it? Right. So that's the second part right there. Is it right for to pray if, if it be thy will? 
uh, when ministering healing uh, and deliverance, we don't pray. It's not necessary for us to make prayers like that. Because we know that God wants to heal everyone, we just say, okay, Lord, heal this person in the name of Jesus, right? You remember the Lord's prayer. What does it say? Your kingdom come, your will be done. What happens when we are saying that? We are saying, okay, Lord, let your kingdom come over this person. What are we saying? We know it is your will to heal this person. So come, let, let your will be done. That means I know it is your will to heal this person. So come and establish your will. Are you guys with me? Yes? No? Okay. <clears throat> right, let's go to the next section. Uh, it says in, uh, I don't know which page. Uh, since God is sovereign, won't he just heal people uh, if and when he wants to? Since God is sovereign, won't he just heal people if and when he wants to? Okay. Um, can someone read that passage? Uh, portion from your notes in from use a mic if you will the passage section that says this is a sincere question many ask that one this is a this is a sincere question okay hold on so i can those online here hey, uh, his mic is his mic on This is a sincere question many ask and quite challenging to respond to. There is on doubt, but doubt that God is all powerful. He can do everything. He can heal and deliver any person is an instant. We also know that God is sovereign and acts by his own will and at any time he desires. No one can stop him. So why doesn't God powerful, loving God? A healing and delivering God just heal every sick person and deliver every oppressed person why do we still see some of our own brethren even those who have served God faithfully and who love him dearly suffer pain sickness and die because of following illness why doesn't God in his sovereignty just heal them and make them well right thanks very much Appreciate it. Okay, it, it's a classic question, and it's a very genuine question, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Can you use the mic and read all the scriptures? So you're going to read Matthew 9.22 and Mark 6.56. But Jesus turning and seeing her head Daughter, take courage. Your faith has made you well. At once the woman was made well. That okay. is Mark, Mark 10. Sure. Okay. 9, Mark chapter 6, verse 56. Wherever he entered villages or cities or countryside, they were laying the sick in the marketplaces and imploring him that they might just touch the fringe of his cloak yeah. and as many as touch it were being cured okay and mark 10 52 10 52 mark 10 52 and yeah. jesus said to him go your faith has made you well immediately he regained his sight and began following him on the road okay and james chapter 5 13 to 16 is anyone among you suffering? Then he must pray. Is anyone cheerful? He is to sing praises. If anyone among you sick, then he must call the elder, call for the elders of the church, and they are to pray over him, 
anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will restore the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, they will be forgiven him. Mm. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. Right. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, as we mentioned, the word salvation. So, the Greek word for salvation is what? Sozo. And it's men mentioned over a hundred and... 10 times in the New Testament alone. Okay, so every word where healing is also mentioned in the Greek is uh, you should use this app uh, called uh, the Blue Letter Bible if you can, or, or uh, there's something called the Greek Linear Bible app. So, what in, in those uh, apps, you find the Greek words mentioned with the English literal translations of it. And so you will see the words sozo used in Greek, and then the same word where healed will be used and saved will be used. Now, a couple of scriptures, like for example, let's go to Mark 10, uh, 52, right? I think Mark 10, 52. Okay, so it says, go your way. Your faith has made you well. That's what it says, right? Go your way. Your faith has. Mark chapter 10, verse 52. Yes, go, um, go your way, your faith has made. Okay, now, right um, on the word made, do you see, uh, what's that, a footnote? A footnote on the word, you know what a footnote is, right? Like, uh, you'll see a small letter, and at the bottom there's a explanation of what that, okay? Um, so there's a footnote here at that word made. It's translated, it also means saved you. That means it says, go your way, your faith has saved you. Now, when do we use the word saved? We say, I am saved. Why? Because I've made the salvation prayer. Right? And so you see in this context, it says you've been saved, but in the context of that him being healed. See what I'm saying? Okay, so that's why when we say that sozo is, it has all of these meanings. It's used in places where they are healed. That means they are saved. And that's what it means over here. And so, yeah, it, it might help you when you read it with the, the parallel uh, Bible as well. But in, that's basically what it is. Um, yes. And so just like what now we said the cross is for everyone, salvation is for everyone, isn't it? Now, but what do you and I have to do? We confess, we pray, we repent of our sins, and then that salvation becomes available for us, isn't it? John 3 16, whoever believes, right? And so again, Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, we read, right? if you confess and you have to believe in your heart. Isn't it? So all of that is linked. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Okay, so you present the gospel, and the gospel has this all message. The gospel is for the sinners, for those who are sick, for those who are in need of healing and deliverance and everything. Right? Um, so that's basically what salvation really means. Um, does it make sense? Yeah, anything else? Any other questions? Anyone? Francis? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so we just uh, read this section. If since God is sovereign, uh, you know, if he's all powerful, all knowing, ever present, if he's good and uh, a loving God, and he's if he's our healer and a deliverer, why doesn't he just heal everyone? It's a genuine question, right? Uh, it's a very valid question when people ask that, isn't it? Um, and so, what is sovereign? Sorry. 
He does what he pleases. Okay. Sovereign. If you have to pronounce it differently, sovereign. If you split it, S O V R E I G N. Sov rain. That's how you say it, right? Rain. So R E I G N. I hope I'm spelling it right. <laughs> so you use the word rain in what context? Not R A I N, but huh? rule, right? A kingdom. This king reigned for 40 years, right? David reigned for 40 years, etc., uh, etc. Et so when we say sovereign, or when we say God is sovereign, it simply means single reign, right? It's single reign. That means there is no end for his kingdom, right? Its kingdom lasts forever and ever, right? From everlasting to everlasting, right? He is God, right? Um, so this is wonderful choir chorus that we sing. You've heard hallelujah. You've heard that? Hallelujah. 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 Right. He shall reign forever and ever. King of kings. You heard that? No? Forever and ever. Sopranos will be singing. Forever and ever. Right? So... <laughs> Uh, basically, that's what sovereign is. He's single reign. But uh, with this with this thought in mind, uh, we want to address about three different parts. Okay, one is the sovereignty of God and the responsibility of man, and second one is the sovereignty of God and the exercise of faith, and third one is we walk by faith that has been revealed and search out what is unknown. All right. Okay. There's a quick question from Nina here. Okay. So when we are praying for people who are sick, there is healing, but the same problem re recurs after a period. So the way to go out uh, about it is to persist, trusting in God's word. Yes, Nina. That's, uh, that is the simple answer. Uh, so I've met, we've spoken about this very briefly in the uh, in the previous sections or classes. Is so you you receive your healing, right? For example, let's say a joint pain or a knee pain or whatever. Um, and after you've received your healing, you don't jump off a compound wall or a building and say, uh, "Think right." You 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 try to do things that you couldn't do. For example, if I've received uh, healing for my knee, I will jump. I will see that there is no pain, and I will testify to that. But that that should not lead us to. Uh, irrational things uh, but the same thing and that's just one example but it it applies to every different aspect of healing um right even if you're if there's if if a person is delivered from demons uh it, now what was in the, in in the spirit which was occupied is gone out now the person is not delivered again to be empty that emptiness has to be filled with the spirit of the living god Right, and otherwise, if you just open up and continue to do some of the things that you were doing when you were possessed, maybe uh, it is possible. I mean, that it says the Bible says the demon will go and bring back seven more of his friends, colleagues, <laughs> uh, and come and dwell in you. Right, so um, it is up to us, and that's actually uh, in line with what we were just going to discuss in the first part: is the sovereignty of God and the responsibility of man. And I want to combine both those points: sovereignty of God, responsibility of man, and the exercise of uh, of faith. Okay. The beauty of our God in His sovereignty, in His all powerfulness, is that He wants to partner with us everybody say partner right what does a partner mean your co-equal isn't it i'm a co-founder i'm a co-partner of this company of this organization right i have the same rights as the other person has right me and prince are the managing directors co-founder of a certain organization uh, you know, I can say one thing, and then he also has the same amount of uh, rights to maybe change it or whatnot, and we come in agreement, is it? Isn't it? And that's the beauty of our God. It's not just the beauty, but is you see his humility in it. Yes, he can do whatever he wants to do. Right? That's what it says in Psalm 115. Look at that. Psalm 115, verse 3 and 16. In the notes, it says. But our God is in heaven. He does whatever he pleases. 
that will upset a lot of people. <laughs> right? Uh, but our God is in heaven. He does whatever He pleases. Then, then see the following verse, the verse 16. The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth He has given to the children of men. So again, rented space. You remember that analogy, that example, right? He's the owner. We are the tenants. <laughs> right? It is our responsibility to keep it clean, to make sure that there's no mess. Right? God in his sovereignty, he could have even intervened, interrupted, and stopped Eve from eating the fruit. Yes or no? Why do we only talk about his sovereignty only when it comes to healing? Right? When you look at the whole package, the whole context, uh, we, he's given the earth for us. He said, okay, you have dominion over this realm. So you exercise it. Right? But and that's the beauty of it is that he will not intervene. That's where prayer comes into the picture. Intercession. Right? Teach us to pray, let your kingdom come, let your will be done. Uh, we look at Abraham. Uh, Abraham interceded for a city. Yeah? What? What city? Bangalore. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. What did he pray? Okay. Where did he start? <laughs> All the way down to? One. Right? So what is Abraham doing? He's interceding on behalf of the city, isn't it? Now, God is sovereign even then. Why did he have to have this conversation with Abraham? Exactly. And we see in James that Abraham is called as the friend of God. And he longs for that. This our God that we are talking about, he longs for this partnership, this friendship. It's like he's inviting. And same thing with Moses. You know, God says, you know, I think I'm going to destroy this stiff-necked people in the desert, uh, you know, uh, that, you, that you have brought out. Moses is like, uh, I didn't bring them out. You brought them out. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and another sec... Uh, section where uh, Moses is in before the Red Sea and whatnot. Uh, and God, I don't know what to do now. The Israelites are you know, complaining nonstop. I don't know what to do. There's a sea in front of us. Uh, what do I do? God is like, what is in your hand? A stick. <laughs> you see that engagement, that conversation that is happening? He doesn't need to do all that. But he loves it. Are you with me? And same thing when it comes to heal, ministering, healing, and deliverance. He's inviting us to be partners, to establish, to just release his kingdom here on earth. So that we would be vessels through which his kingdom will overflow. Are you with me? Right? Uh, you know, in John chapter 4, uh, well, I forget the verse. But John chapter 4, it says, like, when you believe there is a spring of water inside of you. Yes or no? Okay, that's what John chapter 4 says. And then John chapter 7, it says, there is a river of life that is in you that wants to flow out. Now, when you, when you believe in Jesus, that spring is in you, is for you, for your salvation. But the river of life is for those people around you that wants to be healed, that needs to be healed and delivered. Are you guys with me? Okay, um, so let's just uh, pause here. And we'll take a break. We'll come back and resume the remaining remainder of the session. Okay. Yeah, thanks, guys. Have a good break. <laughs>